Ecclesiastes 8 and verse 11, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Double honest, the apostles and elders are great millstone where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations are buzz on down teaching, preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to the four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. Greetings also to the few elect ladies that tune into these video epistles. Warning is prophecy again this morning. It's a warning. Floodwaters are rising fast and brutal judgment is near or some words like that. That's what we're gonna call the lesson. Blood of folly in Israel, and most high, whose name is Yahweh, his only begotten son is Yahweh Shai, their master strategist. And they've got this devil in the earth, Esau Edom, calling himself the white man. They're intensifying all of the distractions. You can see it ramping up. It's getting more and more, he's using this man. He thinks that he's in charge. He thinks that he's in charge, not realizing he's just being used to do all of the things he's doing. This is the wicked in the earth. And we're going to go now to, let's get straight back to it here, Titus. Titus, let's get to Titus 1. Let's go from 9. Holding fast the unfaithful, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Verse 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. So they know who they are. See? This is all playing itself over and over and over. We just won't learn the lessons. A bunch of us, the two-thirds, they have been drawn away with crazy doctrines, one mad doctrine after the other, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they are not for filthy lucre's sake. So the, all of these people, they've been compromised one way or the other. And they can't stop themselves from falling after the foolishness that they're putting out there. And they're drawing the two-thirds, the undesirables, those who have been rejected, the scripture says, the rest were blinded. Actually, let's get Romans. But we're going to go to Romans 3. Let's get a few verses here. Romans 3, start at 18. There is no fear of the Most High before their eyes. And you can see that. When they open their eyes, they're not frightened that they could be struck down as soon as they open their mouth with their lies and their folly. No, they're carrying on. They're emboldened. As the scripture said in uh, the first one we read at the top of the lesson there, Ecclesiastes 8 and 11, because judgment is not executed speedily. So they're quite happy to carry on doing what they're doing. There's no fear of the Most High, whose name is Yahweh, before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith. See, a lot of these people, they're pushing the law. They don't want to know about faith because they don't have any. Their doctrine is faithless. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before Yahweh. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now, the righteousness of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, without the law, is manifest. That's to be is made clear, is made known, that which was hidden, hidden, this, this word that I... Getting to love is being manifest. Let's read again. I messed it up. But now the righteousness of the Most High without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. See that? Righteousness without the law. They just can't get that part at all. They stop. They stop. Even the righteousness of the Most High, which is by faith, of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach is the son, it means redeemer. 
deliverer. He's our savior. He's the captain of our salvation. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh. They just can't get it. They stop. They have been blinded. And this idea of false prophets being judged, it's scary enough. But even more worrying is supposed to be when the, uh, when the true prophets are, are silenced. We had a scripture here. Because uh, when they're silenced, then all hell is going to break loose. Let's get... We had one verse here in Ezekiel. Three. I'm going to get 26 and 27. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth that thou shalt be dumb and shall not be to them a reprover. Why? For they are a rebellious house. Stiff necked. This is the children of Israel. See, they're calling us a bunch of names. So I want to hide who we are. We see a list of these perpetrators headed up by Esau, Edom in Psalms. 83 they don't want you to know who they are who you are who anybody is they've messed the whole thing up to hide they were a fugitive and a vagabond that's Cain their progenitor and he's run up and down the place taking everybody else's identity but we are the true children of Israel they're calling us Negroes Latino Native Americans and a bunch of other names it doesn't matter anymore the truth is out there but when I speak with thee I will open thy mouth and thou shalt say unto them thus saith Yahweh power he that heareth let him hear and he that forbeareth let him forbear for they are a rebellious house it don't matter anymore judgment is closed the floodwaters are rising up Let's get First Timothy. First Timothy 4, 1 and 2. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. They can't get away from the things they're saying. Their conscience has been seared with lies, false doctrine. That's what they're pushing. And it's nearly time to close the book. Let's get some of these back to the beginning here. Genesis 6. Genesis 6, we're going to go from Five to eight, the doors of the ark are about to close. Let's get it. Isaiah 6, we're going to go from five. And the Most High saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. We're just touching up on these scriptures. I know there's a heavy lesson in here. Maybe one day I'll be able to do it. Lord willing, if time allows, we're running out of time for everything. Even this word, the book is about to be closed. The waters are rising. Where are we? And the Most High saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, things, and the fowl of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made him. But Noah found grace in the eyes of of the Lord. Let's get 17. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh where is, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. It's getting ready to happen again, but this time with fire it's coming. Verse 18, but with thee will I establish my covenant and it's only the elect of the house of Israel on this occasion who's going to be beamed up, transformed, translated. With thee will I establish my covenant and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. The rest are not going to make it. They're falling foul of the seducing spirits. Genesis 7 and 16. And they that went in 
went in male and female of all flesh as the most high had commanded him and the lord shut him in it's getting ready to happen now doors to the ark are about to be shut and brutal judgment it's really close let's get red letter yeah i speaking here in matthew let's go from 37 but as the days of noah were so shall also the coming of the son of man be for as in the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came he was preaching for 120 years the same message on and on and on and on they were getting bored what are you going on about you idiot 120 years the same message we're not interested oh but look over here it says this on this page oh it's even contradictory oh this, this is the white man who wrote it oh you don't have to do this that doesn't count right they've all got their own spin on things and what about all this merchandise i've got don't forget to purchase all of my stuff and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be and it goes on to give a list of all of the preoccupations of man His second death is close it's all in revelation it's, it's everywhere fire is coming so you keep up the folly it's like there's a conveyor belt whose turn is it to come up with a crazy doctrine to challenge the truth and each one has just been destroyed, but it doesn't seem to matter. They did come back with something next week, next week, the following week. It's like this, like a list. Crazy, bugged out doctrines. It's not going to stretch the lesson beyond where it needs to be. You've been listening to warning. The flood waters are rising fast and brutal judgment is near. But we don't fear man. We fear our power. Shalom. Till the next lesson. No fear. No sorrow. No sir.